All right, so let's talk about 2.5 absolute value equations and inequalities. Um, as you guys recall from algebra one, absolute value is the distance away from zero and distance is always positive. So long story short, you can remember that it's, it's always distance or you could just remember that the absolute value of something is always gonna be a positive number. Okay, now absolute value equations typically have two answers, okay, because it's different, it's distance. You could walk to the left or you could walk to the right. And uh, it'll make sense to you in a second. So when we're asked to find the absolute value, all right, of something, we're asked to find what number, like in A, what number when I take the absolute value of it, do I get a three? Meaning what number is three units away from zero? So, and this is the only one I'm gonna do it for because it is kind of cumbersome, it doesn't really make sense. So we're here at zero. So what numbers are three units away from zero? So if I have my number line here, all right, and I put my numbers in, oops, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, okay. Now what numbers are three units away from zero? So we could go three units to the right, one, two, three. That gives me an answer of x equals three. Or I could go three units to the left, one, two, three, and that gives me x equals negative three. Now this one has two solutions, okay. Notice I have a positive one and a negative, okay. Won't always be positive and negative. But for ones like that, where the absolute value of x equals a number, we're gonna get two solutions. Now, x equals zero, okay, which one, all right, what number is zero units away from zero? So there's zero, which one is zero units away? Well, zero units away is zero, so x equals zero. This is the one that has one solution. Now, no solution is, well, remember, absolute value has to be a positive number. It's a distance. So this is no solution. You can't walk negative distance, okay? It's not the way it works. So with these, we have to take into consideration that we could be talking about positive seven or negative seven in this case. So we're gonna have two equations that we need to solve. We're gonna have x plus five equals seven. We're gonna have x plus five equals negative seven. And we can go ahead and we would subtract five from both sides and because there's not a lot of room here. I'm gonna to have to keep it, uh, my work nice and neat. So we have x equals two and here we get x equals negative 12. If we plug them in, we'd have two plus five is seven. If we plug in negative 12, we'd have Negative 12 plus five is negative seven. The absolute value of that is seven. So for B, we need to get the absolute value by itself. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract three first. We get an absolute value of two X minus one equals five. So we have our two equations. We have two X minus one equals five. And we have two X minus one equals negative five. So if I go ahead and solve this one on the left, I add one. We have two X equals six. So X equals three, add one here. That gives us two X equals negative four and X equals negative two. Notice I have my two answers. <coughs> With C, the absolute value is already by itself. So I can do 3x plus 4 equals 10, <coughs> and 3x plus 4 equals negative 10. So I subtract 4, and that gives me 3x equals 6, and that's x equals 2, okay? And here, subtract 4, 3x equals negative 14. Divide by 3, we get x equals negative 14 thirds. And there's our answer. Now for D, 
we have to get the absolute value by itself. So I subtract 10, I have the absolute value of 2x plus 6 equals negative 4. And we break it apart, right? So we have 2x plus 6 equals negative 4, and 2x plus 6 equals positive 4. Well, the answer is no. We do not break this one apart. And the problem is, is kids get into such a habit of just going through the motions here, not thinking about it. Oh, we have the absolute value of a number, all right, equals something. So I have a, I take positive number and or negative of that number, and I just set my equation equal to it. The answer is no here. We can't do that. And think about why can't I just write 2x plus 6 equals negative 4 and 2x plus 6 equals positive 4. Think about it. Very good, very good, Jay. We can't do it because the absolute value cannot equal a negative number. So this is no solution. We always have to keep that in the back of our mind that even though we get in the habit of solving these problems, we still have to think about what does absolute value mean? And it means, okay, it means that we're talking about distance and distance can never be negative. All right, so let's look at our um, problems down here. Now, these are absolute value problems that equal absolute value problems. And these are pretty interesting, all right? Matter of fact, they're very interesting, okay? So when we have absolute value problems equaling absolute value problems, just focus on one side, all right? We have... The absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals the absolute value of 7x minus 16. So we're going to have 3x minus 4 equals 7x minus 16. Okay. I'm really focusing on this 3x minus 4 side here. So that's the side that's um, going to remain the same. Okay. Now, on the other side, we have that 3x minus 4 equals negative 7x plus 16. Now, why did I do that? Well, we have a positive side and a negative side. Notice with the negative side, I flip my signs. So when I go ahead and solve these, okay, now again, I don't have a lot of room, so I gotta kind of skip some steps, but listen to me. I'm gonna subtract 3x from both sides. 7x minus 3x is 4x. So I have negative 4x, or negative 4 equals 4x minus 16. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add 16 to both sides. And that's going to give me 12 equals 4x. So x equals 3. There's my one solution. Now, here on this side, I'm going to move the 7x, all right, that negative 7x because it's smaller, and I get 10x minus 4 equals 16. 10x equals 20 because I added the 4 to both sides, and x equals 2. So I have my two answers here, okay? I have my two answers. Now I don't have to flip the signs of the other side. So I, I don't have to do seven X minus 16 equals three X minus four and seven X minus 16 equals negative three X minus four because it's the same thing, okay? No, I'm just flipping the sides that would have the negative, all right? So you don't have to worry about that. You just focus on one side and I always focus on the left side they change the signs on, signs on the right side, okay? So there's that, let me erase this. For B, we have x plus eight equals two x plus one, and then we have x plus eight equals negative two x minus one. So here, we're gonna go ahead and subtract x from both sides. That's going to give me 8 equals x plus 1. And I think you guys can all see x is going to equal 7 then. And over here, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. It gives me 3x plus 8 equals negative 1. Subtract 8, and you get 3x equals negative 9. Go ahead and divide by 3, and we get x equals negative 3. 
Now, C is starred. Obviously, there's something going on here. So let's go ahead and do this the way we um, were doing the last problems. We have x plus 5 equals x plus 11. Then we have x plus 5 equals negative x minus 11. Now, here's the reason why this is kind of funky. Well, let's go ahead and solve the uh, left uh, equation. So we subtract x. And we have 5 equals 11. And that's not true. So this side has no solution. Now let's see what happens here, and then we'll talk about it. Well, let's add x to both sides here. So we have 2x plus 5 equals negative 11. Subtract 5. And we have 2x equals negative 16, and x equals negative 8. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's see what happens there. So let's go ahead. We have no solution over here, and we have x equals negative 8 over here. Now let's check it. Well, this side, I think we're all in agreement on the left side, no solution, right? I solved that correctly. If I have a number, all right, let's say I have a positive number, and I add 5 to it, and then I have a positive number, and I add 11 to it. They're not going to be the same. So this side pans out. No solution is definitely part of it. But this minus 8, so we have negative 8 plus 5. Would that equal the absolute value of negative 8 plus 11? And over here, we have the absolute value of negative 3. Does that equal the absolute value of positive 3? And that answer is yes. So for this problem, I only have one solution. OK? I only have one solution. All right, the last one here. We have 2x plus 7 equals 2x plus 9. Let's go ahead and subtract my 2x's. Okay, and this is the positive side. We get 7 equals 9. This is no solution. Just like that last problem, no solution. Now let's go ahead and flip the sign. So we have 2x plus 7 equals negative 2x plus 9. So let's go ahead and add 2x to both sides. So we have 4x plus 7 equals 9, subtract 7, so we have 4x equals 2, and x equals 1 half. So let's go ahead and check that. Is 2 times 1 half? Well, that's 1 plus 7. That's 8. Okay? Now, if I do 2 times 1 half, all right, that's... 1 plus 9, well, that's 10. So that doesn't work out. Oh, that's my problem. I made a mistake up here. So even the best of us can make mistakes. So let's go back and look at this. So I was supposed to be a negative 9. It's a negative 9. That would be up. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Why didn't you guys tell me anything about that? So that's going to be negative 5 minus 7. That's negative 16. So that would be x equals negative 4. So let's check that. Well, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 7. That's going to be 1. All right, so we have the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. So 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8 plus 9. That's 1. It's the absolute value of 1. So there we go. We have only one answer for this. So it's very important to go back and check your work. Sometimes, you know, even the best of us make mistakes, but that's why I check my work. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Other than that, don't forget to work on your web assigns.